Good morning, my dear fellow parishioners, and welcome to our Tuesday morning service. The day is the 5th of March, 2024. It's now 7 a.m. So just bear with me as I read out some of these guidelines. Please keep your microphones muted. If you are not directly involved with conducting the service, we tend to get a lot of feedback during the service, and um, it would be appreciative if you can mute your microphone. Dress appropriately while on camera, and restrict your movements with your cameras on. This service is being recorded and will be placed on the St. Andrew Church YouTube channel. The day leading off in worship is our dear Reverend Dr. Patricia Seeley, and I now invite her to start us off. Thank you, Mr. Williams. A blessed morning to all of you, and let me add my resounding warm welcome that we heard from Mr. Williams' voice this morning. Welcome to our Tuesday morning service. I thank God for you. I thank God for your presence on this platform. I pray that all those who will be joining us will also come on and be blessed, just so you will be blessed as we go through this act of worship. In you, Lord, we certainly put our trust. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and to take up his cross and to follow me. Hear us, O oh Lord. For your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior. And praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, 
is now and shall be forever. Amen. And so we pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and the saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. And now, with humble and penitent hearts, we enter into the throne room. And to Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, 
now have the Ministry of the Word. Psalm number 78, verses 1 to 39, is found on page 566 to 569 in the Book of Common Prayer. Hear my teachings, O my people. Incline your ears to hear the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children. so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. And not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim and with the, with the bow turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. He worked marveled in the sights of their forefathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zod. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rock in the wilderness and gave them drink from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff and the waters gushed out like rivers. But they went on sinning against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They test God in their hearts, demanding food for their craving. They railed against God and said, can God set a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock. The waters gushed out and the gullies overflowed. But is he able to give bread or to provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob 
and his anger mounted against Israel. For they had no faith in God, nor did they put their trust in his saving power. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and the winged birds like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and roamed about their dwellings. So they ate and were filled for he gave them what they craved. But they did not stop their cravings, though the food was still in their mouths. So, God so God's anger mounted against them. He slew their strongest men and laid low the youth of Israel. In spite of all this, they went on sinning and had no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath, and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him and repent and diligently search for God. They would remember that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast towards him, and they were not faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their sins and did not destroy them. Many times he held back his anger and did not commit his wrath to be roused. For you remember, for you remember that they were but flesh, a breath that goes forth and does not return. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, taken from the book Genesis 45. Verses 1 to 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was, so it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh 
and lord of all his house and ruler over the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked to with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord of the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of all to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be forever. Amen. A reading of the Word of God, taken from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Hoses, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there 
except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you. As you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Let's just bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be on this platform and this blessed morning. We thank you for life, Lord God, and we thank you that you have poured your grace upon us. We pray, Lord God, that as we go through this day, that the words that you have sent through the aspects of your gospel and of the Old Testament reading and through the Psalms, Lord God, will resonate in our lives and we will be greater disciples for Jesus Christ. I share with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. Unbelief and faith. What happens when we flip one side against the other. Whenever we talk about faith and about unbelief, we think about Hebrews 11. But today, however, just as potent, we draw upon two stories within our gospel reading. The stories teaching one of unbelief and the other of faith. Stories juxtaposed representing two sides of the same coin. Jesus was teaching in his hometown, and as usual, there were crowds around him observing him. And in his hometown, he heard the voices of people asking, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Wonder, awe, oh, disbelief. And why were these things in their minds? Because they knew Jesus' upbringing. And so they asked, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? So they went straight down into his family line. And not his sisters here with us. They knew him. They knew him and his upbringing. And most likely, he assisted his father as a carpenter. So Jesus was now performing miracles doing wondrous deeds. And like the scribes and Pharisees, they doubted his power. They doubted his divinity. And we know that throughout Jesus' ministry, that this doubt, this dark shadow prevailed all the time because they were looking for a Messiah who would have a strong enemy to defeat the Roman Empire. But here was Jesus with divinity in him, bringing healing to the sick. And with this, Jesus rebuked them. And he said, a prophet is not accepted in his hometown. Put simply, someone who is renowned and who has the power of God upon him, his people will not accept him. He will be accepted elsewhere but not within his hometown, simply because, just as we mentioned, people knew his background. Knowing someone's background will actually tell you 
what it is the person can do. But notice what was the consequence of this. Coming out of all of this, what was the consequence? Because of their doubt, because of their disbelief, Jesus could do few miracles in that town. And we read, and he could do no deed of power there, except that he had laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And further, he was amazed at their unbelief. And as Christians, we need to pay close attention to this. When our unbelief steps in and takes hold of us, then the miracles that Jesus is supposed to perform in our lives become reduced. And I want to say that again. When we allow our disbelief to take hold of us, then Jesus is amazed at our unbelief. And the things that should be poured into our lives may not be poured. And it was just like that in the hometown. Because of their unbelief, there were few miracles that he could do except to lay hands on a few persons. But then we go into the flip side of the coin. And Jesus, in his ministry on earth, knew very well that he must fulfill his father's command. And though there was unbelief there, he continued in his mission. And he called his 12 disciples. And he sent them out. Take nothing for your journey. Take nothing for your journey. When God sent his son on earth, he sent him without anything. And it is the same pattern that Jesus is using in sending out his disciples. God sent his son and he had faith in the human beings and to whom he had placed his son's care, that they would take care of him, that they would feed him, that they would clothe him. And it is the same divine empowerment and covering that Jesus is now giving to his 12 disciples. Take nothing for your journey, except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts. You have to wear sandals. And if we know what sandals are, they don't protect your entire feet. The sandals are just there to protect the soles of your feet. And so you may very well stump your toe somewhere about, but you are covered by the blood. So you are going with bare necessities. If we think of our own lives, whenever we are going on a trip, on a journey, anyway, we spend two days packing, two days, and thinking of everything that we will need for our journey. But Jesus covered his disciples and he said, take nothing for your journey. For us, we may think that Jesus was taking a risk. Because coming through all the readings and so on, we saw these disciples that they were a bit timid a bit hesitant, and in their minds, we can pick up that there was a bit of unbelief in Jesus Christ himself, although they, they had been in such close proximity with him. And Jesus is saying, go out. And he's sending them by twos. He's taking, he's taking a risk. We may think so, but with God, there is no risk. God never takes a risk. God prepares a pathway before us, before he even sends us. And he gave them strict instructions. Wherever you go, the first place that you get there and they accommodate you, go in. It doesn't matter the conditions once they accept you. And I remember once on a tour of the U.S., a number of teachers were sent by our government, the Ministry of Education, on a tour. And at the church, the minister asked people who will be able to accommodate these people. And you would have thought that the rich people inside of the church and the communities would have said, okay, yes, we can take two. Yes, we can take two. Because they asked us to be in pairs. And when I was reading this, this came back to me. Because just as Jesus sent out his disciples in pairs, the Ministry of Education sent us out in pairs. And here was this couple who had one bedroom, one bed, and they took in two of us. 
They slept on their couch and they gave us their bedroom. And that came back to me and that struck me. And this is what Jesus was saying to his disciples. Whoever accepts you, you are not to complain about the conditions. You are to bless them. He said, go out, take nothing for your journey. And those who do not receive you, shake the dust off their sandals. Shake the dust off, because that is going to be God's damnation upon them. So he sent them out. He gave them authority. Because of their own, they had no natural authority. He empowered them with divinity. He empowered them to reach the people of the kingdom. Those same persons who were there with doubts. His disciples were now going out to overpower the doubts of the people. The people to whom they must go were supposed to be blessed by the apostles. And we heard in the readings how powerful the apostles were. Because now that they were going with the faith and with the belief that they have the power, the divinity, to cast out demons, they were able to do so. They were able to anoint the people. They were able to bring healing. They were able to bring people into God's community. And so the questions to us today, this morning, as, as we're on this platform, are we in the first set of people, the doubting Thomases, the people who questions Jesus divinity, the people who are asking, where did this come from? Are we still in the realm of the church? Are we still in the realm of reading the Bible? Are we still in our daily lives, seeing the blessings being poured upon us and asking ourselves, by what authority? By what authority? Or are we like the disciples going out in faith, feeling the anointing upon us, knowing that we can do, knowing that we can shift and I want to throw out a challenge to us this morning. Why not on one Sunday morning, not have the church service inside the church, but go out in the car park right outside? Take nothing for your journey. Go out. At least let the people see a presence of the people of St. Andrew, of the people of St. Philip, of the people of St. Sylvans. Take nothing for your journey, knowing that we are blessed by God, that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, and the divine grace of God is upon us, the blood of Jesus Christ is covering us, and that is all we need for our journey. I pray that as we go on our journey through this week, that we can remember that we can touch and pray for people and ask God's healings upon their lives upon their lives, upon the lives of the family members, upon the lives of our family members, and upon our own lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rock of ages, love for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy ravens I wish long be a sin the double cure. Save
take nothing for your journey. And as we bear those thoughts in our hearts, let us with conviction pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace. O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known among earth. Your saving health among all nations. Lord, let not the needy be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Creating us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Third Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls. That we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body. And from all evil thoughts which may assault and hid the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
into your hands we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it, may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our diocese. O oh God, by your grace, you have called us in this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Bless our Bishop Claude and retired bishops Clyde and Calvin and other clergy and all our people. Grant that your will May we truly preach your word, may be truly preached and truly heard, your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received by your spirit. Fashion our lives according to the example of your son and grant that we may show the power of your love to all among whom we live through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our diocese and cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Crispin's, Woodbrook, Port of Spain, where the Reverend Lewis Bailey officiates. We pray also for the Princess Elizabeth School for the Physically Challenged. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relief your sick servants. And we place them on your altar of grace, Lord God, as your healing power flows over them. Babsy Pollard, Barbara Camps, Barbara Smith, Cheryl Paul, Karina Rudder, Elaine Mango, Felix Morris, Flora Dickinson, Hollis Williams, Idris Eileen Manswell, Ivy Bailey, Linda Seeley, Lucetta Thomas, Phyllis Turton, Sheila Allen David, Kenneth Bash, Sylvia Duncan, Audrey Payne, Errol Seeley, Linda Driggs Rogers, Eileen Samuel, Jacqueline Riley, Mona James, Noel DePay, Janet Ness, Noel DeSeuss, Alfred Wilson, Wayne Rajkumar, the Reverend Canon Selwyn Ness, Deacons Helen Nathan, Cheryl Motley, and Stephen Rewan, and all others, Lord, who require our prayers. Give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness. Have confidence in your saving, in your loving care, and experience your healing grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for the departed, Lord God, Almighty God. We remember before you today our faithful servants. And we pray that having opened to them the gates of larger light, you will receive them more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served you in the past, they may share in the eternal glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Prayer for strength. From the page 76, it's prayer number two. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ in us, Christ over us. May our salvation, O oh Lord, be always ours, this day and forevermore. 
Amen. Prayer number seven, prayer attributed to St. Francis, found on page 77. Merciful God, to you we commend ourselves and all those who need your help and correction. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is darkness, light. Grant that we may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving we receive, in pardoning we are pardoned, and it is in dying we are born into eternal life. Amen. Prayer number 14, prayer for strength. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer number 25, pray for our homes and families. Heavenly Father, whose Son Jesus Christ, born of a woman, sanctified a childhood, and shared the life of an earthly home, Bless the homes and families of our nation. Give to parents a true sense of responsibility in the care and training of their children, that our boys and girls may grow up in the fear of your name and the fellowship of your church. For the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. Friend number 27. Pray for our children. Father, we bring our children to you for your blessing. Help us to be sensitive to their needs. Give us wisdom in our care of them, that they may grow up rooted in love, steadfast in faith, strong and courageous in life. Guide us and all who have the care of children. May we never hinder, but help and encourage them towards independence and maturity, and to a living faith in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer number 28, for young people. O oh God, our Father, we pray for our young people growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more meaning to life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new step. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer number 32. The presence of Christ. Come to us, Lord Christ, in your understanding love when all around us seems dark and uncertain, when our faith is low and we cannot feel you near and we find it hard to pray. Come to us then, dear Lord, as you came to your disciples in the darkest hour of the night and let the light of your presence dispel our fears, renew our trust and bring peace to our hearts. 
for your tender mercy sake. Amen. Prayer of dedication. <clears throat> Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And at this time, we bring before God all those persons who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and any other special occasion. And Father, Lord God, as we place them before you, we ask that your Holy Spirit will cover them afresh, that the blood of Jesus Christ will flow over them, that the grace of God will enfold them, that, Father, Lord God, as they have come before you to say thanks, thanks for the years past, thanks for the blessings received, and they are placing themselves afresh in your hands, Lord God, for a continued journey. We pray that you would give them all they need for their journey, Lord God, that you will fortify them with the finances, with the strength, with the clues, with the health, with everything, with good friends and families, to be around to them, Lord God, that as they continue the journey this year, that they will know that you have provided everything that they need for their journey. And we give you thanks for their lives. We give you thanks that they have come before you, Lord God, to say thanks to you. And we pray for these people, Lord God, who are now before your throne, spiritually, Lord God. And you are the God of spirit. Touch their souls. Touch them right now, Lord God. Let them feel the warmth of your presence. Let them feel your love. And let them hear the prompting of your voice in their spiritual ears. And these mercies we pray in no other name but Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A warm St. Andrew welcome to all, and a special welcome to persons worshipping with us for the first time. Our parish office is open Mondays to Fridays at 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and you can call the office at 679-2157 or call or WhatsApp the cell number at 492-5835 or any member of clergy, Reverend Eric Thompson at 683-9676 or Assistant Curate Reverend Winston Roberts at 484 8352 for further information. Remember today, Tuesday, Reverend Roberts will be at the complex at the office to receive prayers and um, blessings for those who wishing and have conversation with those who are wishing to have meet the clergy. Remember Sahara Das, COVID-19, are all around with us today. This year going out, a lot of people suffering from Sahara dust, throat soreness, etc. So wear a mask if possible. Maintain some distancing. Be safe and be healthy. Our checking account remains in the Incorporated Trustee of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, St. Andrew Parish, Cuba. It is held at the Royal Bank of Canada in Coover, that's in the Coover Shopping Complex. The account number remains 1000800 Our virtual services continue on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and forget that February 29th. It will be this Thursday, this the 7th of March at 6.30 p.m. One more announcement. Reverend Seely, you're there. Could you just expound on yesterday's yes. uh, Monday Lenten training? Yes, Excuse thank me. you so much, Mr. Williams. People who missed that session, you, you missed a really edifying aspect of baptism. I pray that all of you who are on the platform here with us this morning will join us next Monday before we reach Holy Week. And we are looking at the sacraments of Jesus Christ in terms of the two instituted by him, Holy Baptism and the Holy Eucharist. So I urge you to come on, come on to the platform and gain some additional information that you would not normally get from a sermon and things that you will see and hear in, at church. You are going to be interacting with people. So when you get into those breakout rooms, you will be getting different opinions. And once you are there and you're hearing what other people say and think, then you are going to enrich your spiritual life. So come on next Monday, half six, as we continue our Lenten training. Thank you so much again, Mr. Williams, for the opportunity to share on that Lenten training. No run yet. You're up next. Quiet day. Just give us that okay. insight. Okay. Okay, great. I am putting together the proposal to submit to Father Dr. Eric Thompson and our quiet day. And it is going to be on the public holiday, Eid. It's going to be April the 10th. And the theme of the not so quiet day, I will put quiet in inverted commas when I'm sending out that flyer. It's going to be our messy lives. And I have incorporated two professional artists to guide us through. They are lecturers from the University of Trinidad and Tobago. They are very qualified persons. In fact, they teach art and they do exhibitions. And they're going to be there to guide us through our painting. We are going to paint our messy lives to begin with. And then we are going to do a second painting as how God really sees us, our perfect self. We're going to ask you to walk with your Bibles because you're going to find your scripture verse that's going to speak to you 
how God wants you to move from that point A, the first painting you had, to point B, the second painting, how God sees us. We also are going to ask you to bring an old T-shirt because as we get into the paints and so on, we don't want anything to soil your good clothes. So you walk with an old T-shirt that you can put on when you start to paint, your Bibles, of course. Um, we are going to provide lunch for you. So you're free to bring your juices, your water, etc. All right, we will have lunch for you. We are going from nine to two. So we're starting at nine and we're finishing at two. So you still have part of your public holiday to enjoy with your family and your and your friends. So we're going again, April the 10th, from nine to two, the theme, Our Messy Lives. And the mess that you have in your life, you determine what you define as mess. And as I was explaining to some of the congregations, for the children, their mess will be their scattered toys, their scattered books. For some of us, the mess may be an unkept wardrobe. And for some of us, again, the mess may be hurt and pains in our lives. So whatever is your mess, you are going to define that. And you're only going to share if you feel like sharing. No one is going to force you to share. So you're going to paint your messy life to start with. And then you're going to paint how God sees us. Because he sees us perfect and whole and without flaws. And we're going to find the scripture first to move us from point A to point B. So... The persons are there. All I have to do before the end of this, this week is to write the proposal to submit to Father Dr. Harry Thompson because whatever we do, we need a proposal. We need a budget to, for the vestry to approve and that will be done before the end of the week. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of you all at St. Andrew Anglican on April the 10th to paint and repaint our messy lives. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Okay, thank you very much. Um, two more notices. St. Sylvan's prayer breakfast is on the 16th of March at the church location. The Reverend Deacon Mark Samuel will be in attendance and the theme, Salt and Light, taken from Matthew 5, 15 to 14. The breakfast well, the main event starts at 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And um, you have from 9.30 to 12 p.m. the remainder of the service. The picture looks quite enticing here. Um, pretty you can't beat pictures. This Sunday is Youth Sunday. Um, so our youth ministry will be conducting service. On Palm Sunday, we have our normal big and saltfish and uh, body sale by the hospitality committee. I have already procured my tickets. <laughs> so, <laughs> so please see to get yours from any member of the hospitality committee this Sunday at our service. Thank you all very much for tuning in. And remember, it's a beautiful Tuesday morning outside as I look out my window. Do have a safe and blessed day. So let me go back. I don't know why that cut off. Yes, you are allowed a certain time. Something is amiss at present. Okay. Too much that. So we have our normal Tuesday morning glitch as the internet starts to
My thanks to all of you, all who graced our platform this morning. I trust that you have some word to carry you through the day. A special thanks to the worship team for your support. We couldn't have done it without you all. May God continue to strengthen you and bless you in this ministry. And may you feel the empowerment of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit upon your lives and the lives of your family. And now as we go to him who is able to do immeasurable more than all we can ask or conceive. By the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. To have a blessed and spirit filled day. So we can to and be safe on the roads, people. I am going to hit the road in a couple of minutes. So. Yes, so will I. Okay. Permit me to glorify God for the opportunity to be part of our worship today and for the blessings and all the guidance and direction that was shared. Blessings to all, all, all who are part of the worship team. Thank you kindly for your word, Dr. Seeley. Blessings to all those who read. Very well done. And may we continue to be what God wants us to be so that we truly, truly work to carry forward his purpose and help others to come to know to love and to serve him. Blessings to all. Stay strong in the Lord. Thank, Thank you. you, Reverend Lynch. Very welcome, Doc. Thank you, Carl. You're welcome, sir. I don't want to call names. I might call all, so all <laughs> members of the worship team. Thank you yeah. for your presence and support. Thanks again and have a blessed day, everyone. Rev, before you go, does Father Thompson know of 
uh, Paul Thompson's brother dead? Rev? Carl? I'm not sure. Um, it, I put it in Sunday's um, notices and bulletin. So oh. he gets the bulletin. Oh, so. But I can't say for yeah. sure. Um, I I not realize I missed it in this but in this um that announcement, um. But I will give him a call probably later. He was on earlier. Eh? I'll okay. Give him a call probably later and let him know. Or probably yeah. knows already. Possibly. Paul Thompson is um you know one of his brother. The, yes. Right. So I guess he would. He would was just following. Just following you. All right. I'll follow through on it. Thank you and bye everyone. Very well.